Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. Hope folks are doing well. Uh, for our Texas-based folks here, I know this past week was really, really something else. I particularly hope you all are doing well. We've got some good updates and demos to share today from the team. So without further ado, let's hop on in. So we've got some new modules to cover this week. Community contributor Pedrib added not one, but two new exploit modules targeting vulnerable versions of MicroFocus products. The first module leverages an insecure Java deserialization vulnerability found in multiple MicroFocus products. Keep wanting to say Microsoft, MicroFocus, including Operation Bridge Manager, uh, Application Performance Management, Data Center Automation, and more. Vulnerable versions of these products allow for an authenticated remote code execution as the root user on Linux or as the system user on Windows. Pretty cool. The second module targets the operations bridge manager product on Windows, where an existing session can be used to gain a system level session via leverage of an improperly secured folder. Always good to check those permissions. If you're interested in details on the above, Pedrib has a good write up on his GitHub account that you can go check out. And community contributor Hoodie added a new scanner module targeting the Chop Slider 3 WordPress plugin, versions 3.4 and prior. Leveraging a blind SQL injection, this module will dump username and password hashes from the WordPress database, no authentication required. And I believe we'll have a demo of this. Community member and former Metasploit Google Summer of Code participant Red OXFF provided both a new module and new library functionality uh, along with it, targeting an SQL injection vulnerability in D-Link's central Wi-Fi manager product this new auxiliary module can dump the database and also add and remove admin users, no authentication required. This module builds on new Postgres injection capability that Red OXFF also added to the framework library. So a nice one-two punch there. And rounding out our list of modules today, contributor B. Coles added a new module for exploiting an unauthenticated command injection vulnerability in K-Log targets. Klog itself is a syslog server distributed in a Linux VM with vulnerable versions 2.4.1 and prior, allowing unsanitized input via post action to be executed as a shell command. Successful execution of this module will give you a root level session on the target, no authentication required. And I believe we'll have a demo of this as well. Easing into some highlights of new enhancements and features here, our own Spencer McIntyre updated the Exchange ECP DLP policy module to leverage a new exploit technique discovered by Stephen Seeley, which bypasses the original patch Microsoft issued. And this technique also works on unpatched versions as well, which is pretty neat. Our own Chris Granlis improved the handling of external modules when they are missing runtime dependencies, giving the user a more useful error in the event the module can't execute. And we'll have a demo of this. Chris also went through and updated quite a few modules which were doing manual auto checking in their module code to instead leverage the auto check mix in, which is, you know, a nice plus one for common code use. Community member Geislin reduced the size of the 64 bit Linux shell bind TCP random port payload while maintaining the functionality. Nice win there. Contributor B. Coles updated the fairly new pseudo exploit module for the uh, Baron's SAM edit vuln to support Debian 10 targets. And B. Coles also updated MSF tidy to warn when a module is missing a notes section in its metadata. Well, good stuff. Uh, and some more enhancements here. Contributor Tim Wright worked with the community, worked with community member CNDYCC to add some new offsets for targeting Mac OS versions 10.13.1 and 10.13.2 to the Safari proxy object type confusion exploit module, plus one for teamwork. Community member Firefart added the WordPress vulnerability, updated, excuse me, the WordPress vulnerability link type and links to use the new wpscan.com domain. And also uh, he updated associated MSF tidy checks to support the new URL format. 
Our own Jeffrey Martin improved checking and user messaging around password cracker requirements and availability when using the crack modules, such as letting the user know that a database must, must be available or if John the Ripper Jumbo is required. And our own Alan Foster updated framework to the latest RuboCop rules and also added ignoring RuboCop's extra spacing rules for bin data objects. So a nice list of enhancements and features there. Appreciate all those. And bug fixes, we've got some bug fix highlights here. Uh, contributor Tim Wright fixed the Java interpreter screenshot capability for Windows targets, also preventing unnecessarily uploading the screenshot DLL when using the screenshot command on non-native Windows sessions. Tim also fixed an improved multi-manage uh, Shelter interpreter on Mac OS by using Python reflection to upgrade a shell session on Mac OS to an interpreter session in memory without dropping a file to disk. Pretty slick. Our own Dean Welch uh, fixed an issue with framework HTTP library code where the vhost data store variable would be set incorrectly if a user used an Etsy host entry for resolving a host name to an IP address. Dean also updated the salt stack salt API command exec module to correctly show failure messages to the user under error scenarios. Always good to do that. Uh, contributor B. Coles caught and fixed a typo in MSF tidy that was causing MSF tidy to skip some checks against exploit modules. Appreciate the good eye there, B. Coles. And community member Red OXFF fixed an improved length detection for time based MySQL I injections and added support for empty string encoding. So nice fixes, nice, nice bug fixes there. Um, as always, you can stay up to date with the weekly Metasploit wrap-up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And we really appreciate everybody who helps make Metasploit better through their contributions to the project. Thank you. And we'll roll into some demos here. Uh, we'll start with a K-Log module demo. Ms. Shelby? Yep. Cool. Should I go ahead and start it? Sure, go ahead. OK, cool. Thanks. Here we go. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so B. Coles contributed this module, which exploits K-Log server versions 2.4.1 and prior. Uh, so this module actually exploits a command injection vulnerability in K-Log server's login functionality, specifically the authenticate.php uh, page. Uh, so the user post parameter eventually gets passed to the PHP shell exec function, which allows code execution. Uh, additionally, the server's uh, sudo configuration uh, permits using sudo without requiring a password. So the exploit ends up achieving uh, un unauthenticated code execution with root privileges. And I don't know, um, yeah, you can see it, uh, the use sudo, uh, I guess, option. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's an uh, option that basically allows you to either choose between using sudo to, to get the root privileges or, or not. Um, I think that's basically the only option there, um, but yeah. Nice. I, I'm kind of curious how how popular the software is, and I don't know if 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 you know the answer to that, Shelby. Uh, it was it was uh, a new one to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was a new one to me as well. I'm not sure exactly how popular it is, honestly. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. Just another it can be another tool in the in the old tool toolbox for for people on a on a pen test engagement or something, right? There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Shelby. And let's see, we've got a demo of the WordPress chop slider uh, module uh, with uh, Christoph. Christoph. Yep. Sure. Um, so. Top Slider 3 is a, a WordPress plugin from idandrew.us. And it basically allows you to, to create sliders with the transition effects uh, between pictures. So uh, this version is vulnerable to SQL injection. And actually, there is no fix available. It looks like it's a discontinued project. Uh, last commit was, last commit was uh, from five years ago. Roughly. Um, so please, can you go ahead and uh, run the video, please? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, here we have uh, the version 3.4, which is the latest one. Uh, we set up 
at least one top slider and a few users in the, uh, the target WordPress application. So it is a scanner and uh, it exploits a SQL injection in the ID get parameter of the get script index.php page. Uh, it is a blind SQL injection and uh, the way the module exploited it's uh, with a time-based injection. So it takes a bit of time and I had to edit the video to be uh, like to fit in this demo. So here we set up everything we also set up the count uh, option, which is uh, the actual number of users we want to retrieve. So this module will uh, inject its payload and uh, retrieve username and password from uh, WordPress. So it is, uh, you don't need authentication, that's uh, interesting. And uh, here we go. So we have some users and hash passwords ready. Nice. I think to, to your to point you mentioned, Christoph, is that this the last version of this software appears to be five years old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. Not maintained. Not maintained. Actually, it was a paid project, what I understood, and they just released everything for free now, but uh, for free with SQL injection. <laughs> a, little, a little bonus snuck in there. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Christoph. Appreciate it. All right. And uh, uh, Chris Gromleys is going to show us uh, some of the improvements he made to, to the error messaging uh, when running external modules. I think specifically Python and Go. Yep. So here we have uh, two screenshots, uh, the first one being uh, they are handling uh, prior to the changes, basically where it was just going to state, there was going to state that it failed to load uh, the module and return the path. Uh, with the recent changes, it's going to also return that it failed to load the module. However, uh, it's going to return some extra information on top of that. Uh, the bottom screenshot here after the changes was replicated on a machine that did not have Go installed. So the extra information basically state to the user that uh, it has failed to execute the external Go module and to please ensure that you have uh, Go install in your environment. And as Pierre said, uh, this will also work for Python if you're trying to run an external Python module on a machine that does not have it installed. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a nice wee uh, improvement there, is there? Yeah, it's nice. It'll help give the user a little bit more of a point in the right direction for uh instead of just a, uh, didn't work, it didn't work. Maybe you, your environment needs it. So appreciate that, Chris. And we'll slide over to Grant. He's gonna show us some better handling of incompatible interpreter extensions and commands, uh, which I believe is, it's available from, if you go on, a, on our latest head of branch um, in, in um, the Metasploit framework repo, but to, it will be out in the next re release we cut this week, if I, if I have that correct. Yeah, so this PR was actually from our own Spencer McIntyre. Um, so congrats to Spencer for making this available. Um, so if you just play the video, basically what we had before was quite a number of issues with uh, a bunch of community members who had basically said that the, some of the interpreter commands were not working correctly. Um, so we had a bunch of issues related to this. Uh, now at the top of the demo screen, you can see that I've got a bunch of different types of payloads uh, that are all interpreter payloads. For the purpose of this, I'm just gonna use the PHP since it has a lot fewer features than many other um, interpreter implementations. So it's just to show that some of the uh, commands that PHP interpreter doesn't support are now correctly recognized. Um, just a bit of a better demonstration than something that's a bit more featured, full featured like the Windows interpreter. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set up the handler here, just connect to that shell.
All right, so now that we got us so we're just going to try a short little command here. Um, so we're going to try get system, which is not implemented. You'll see it correctly. So it's the, the command is unknown. Um, and then if we try some of the other commands, so some supported commands, and then get a full listing of, uh, sorry, actually, here we'll also see, we try to take the screenshot command. Um, and now this correctly says that it's not supported by this uh, interpreter type. So PHP doesn't support the screenshot command. Uh, previously, it would try to attempt to take a screenshot, which could then cause errors since it wouldn't actually handle it. Um, you also see now that the networking commands, um, PHP doesn't support the interpreter doesn't support the root command. So it doesn't show the root command in the list of supported commands either. And if we try typing root, you'll just get the same. It's not supported by this interpreter type. Um, so hopefully these changes will make it a lot easier for people to understand what limitations there are on different versions of interpreter and will also help reduce some of the errors that we were getting previously in our issue tracker. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Grant. And uh, thanks everybody for those demos. Those are great. Appreciate that. Um, next up, we'll talk about Attacker KB, the Attacker Knowledge Base, a website for discussing which bones matter and why. Just visit attackerkb.com. It's that easy. Um, I'm going to hand the mic over to Matthew, who will just catch us up uh, on a recent site update um, the team pushed out. Matthew? So it's it's probably been a while since you y'all seen a uh, release from Attacker KB. We've been busy working on a number of uh, new developments that you'll see soon. Uh, there's a, in addition to this release, there's still a lot of uh, background sort of non-user facing improvements and enhancements to the Attacker KB system that have been made. But uh, we gathered a good number of uh, minor enhancements and, and, and bug fixes. We decided to get a deploy out. Uh, last Friday. Um, most of them are uh, UI improvements, but we also have a little focus on the search side of things. Uh, I'll do a quick demo of this first one, the uh, search results limit that Jorge uh, Huerta uh, implemented before rotating out of our team. And then I'll uh, turn it over for Siri to do a demo of a search improvement she did. Uh, one thing you'll probably notice on searches now, if you do a vague, fairly vague search, something that has a large number of results, you'll get this warning here that there is really only a maximum of uh, 10,000 displayable to refine your search. The problem was if you would spend the time to page through 10,000 results, you'd end up running into an error. Uh, so we've we've uh, resolved that error and also let the user you know, sort of bring awareness to that. Uh, you might want to refine your search a little to, to find what you're looking for uh, before even getting into the search filters. Um, that's all really uh, to demonstrate. You'll probably maybe notice a little minor UI enhancements are around as you use the site, but uh, do know that the team is busy working on some really exciting features that we'll hopefully be delivering soon. Nice. Thanks, Matthew. Well, I've got, we've got one more demo. Uh, this one coming from our recent, recent to the team as of the beginning of this month, rotational program participant, Siri. Uh, she fixed a search error that she's gonna demo for us. Okay, great. Um, so basically we had this problem where if the user included a percent sign in their search query, they would, oops, they would get this 500 internal server error. Um, so that was being caused by us not properly um, escaping the query string when we were passing it to the controller. So I just made sure that that was properly escaped. And now, if you search for a percent, you get results. So that's pretty cool. And that's it. Yay. Usability for the win. Any any questions for Siri? 
Sorry, Go just ahead. a quick question, but are there other characters that were identified as being potential issues as part of fixing this? Um, no, for some reason, the percent sign was the only one that was causing problems. Um, so, but hopefully they all, they all work now. And def definitely a report that hop in the, uh, the feedback channel. Let us know if you, if you come across other ones that are throwing errors. Excellent.